Not all the Hermes leathers are available in those three elusive bags. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about Hermes leathers, but it's just going to be a bit different than my Hermes leather guide. This is actually what leathers are available in which of the elusive bags. Okay, so we are only talking about Birkin, Kelly or Constance, but I get asked this a lot. People ask me questions, what leather would you recommend for this bag? And sometimes people will say, oh, I was thinking of getting this leather, but then that leather isn't even available in that particular bag that they're looking for. So I thought I would actually put together a video that explains to you that not all the Hermes leathers are available in those three elusive bags. So the Birkin doesn't have all the leathers, um, the Kelly, isn't in all the leathers, I should say, and the Constance isn't in all the leathers. So you can't just pick and choose exactly what you want from Hermes when it comes to leathers. The only thing that this varies is, is obviously with special orders, okay? But we are not talking about special orders, the horseshoe stamp bags. We are not talking about being able to order a bag that you want in a specific leather. This is just going to be bags that you could be offered as a, you know, a regular client, uh, a quota bag, that kind of thing. We're just going to be talking about that. All right. Um, before I dive into the video, if you are new to my channel, then welcome. I would love if you would hit that subscribe button below and also the bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos, which is twice a week on a Wednesday and on a weekend. I talk all about luxury and I I would say that I specifically talk a lot about Hermes, so um, I am probably your go-to guru when it comes to Hermes. So if you do love Hermes, I definitely suggest that you subscribe to my channel. I think that you'll find a lot of my content interesting. Okay, so before we dive into this video, um, I just wanted to let you know that obviously if you're watching this video, it is about Hermes. So of course, I'm going to tell you guys that I still have my coupon code with 7 Rue Paradise. So 7 Rue Paradise makes the absolute best the best inserts for your Hermes bags. And I had this comment to me before, like saying, oh, I need to be fair to all insert companies, you know, that sort of thing. And totally, yeah, I understand that other people might feel more comfortable with using other inserts. However, I feel as though my opinion is extremely objective, not subjective, objective. I feel like my opinion is objective when I'm saying that these truly are the best inserts because I have used six insert brands before. Six. Yes, I have tried six different brands of inserts and all of them I was dissatisfied in some way. Some worse than others, some were like okay, but there was always something that I was dissatisfied with. Like whether it be that obviously it would leave impression marks or something like that, uh, stretch out the leather, uh, whether it actually minimized the capacity that I could even fit in my bag, like the insert was like too fat and too thick. Even if it was soft, it was too thick. So there have been many variables that I have actually experienced with inserts. And I feel as though it's no longer worth my money buying and trying different inserts, even though I've already tried six, I feel like there's nothing else left to try. Um, when I know that I'm just 100% satisfied with Seven Rue Paradise, like why bother when I know that this works and it's the safest for your bag? Also as well, the Seven Rue Paradise inserts, they do ship tax free, so they are duties paid. So you don't have to worry about paying tax when you do receive these inserts. Um, I do have a coupon code to get 30 euro off, which is POF30 at checkout. But if you need two inserts, then I have a coupon code for 70 euro off, which is POF70. All the details will be in the description bar down below for reference. Okay, so let's dive right into this video. We are going to start off with um, the Kelly Cellia. Now I don't have a Kelly Cellia in my collection currently. Um, I did once before have a Kelly 25 in Epsom, but I no longer. The main leather that you would actually find in a Kelly Cellia bag is in fact Epsom. So I do have an example here. I have my Belie 27, which is in Epsom in the color gray, just so you can have a look at the leather. Epsom is a artificial grain. It is heat pressed. I'm not going to talk in detail about the leathers because I do have two Hermes leather guides. I have a leather guide on the permanent leathers, which is definitely one to watch because a lot of these leathers, are, the permanent ones, are the ones that are more frequently in your Burke and Kelly Constance. And then I have a leather guide on all the other leathers which are discontinued, are rarer to get, push offers, and that sort of thing. So definitely watch the both of those videos if you want to get in-depth information in regards to the actual leather. So yeah, as I was saying, this is in Epsom. And the reason that they obviously do Epsom for the Kelly Cellia is because Epsom is a very structured leather. It is, uh, like I said, a heat press grain. So that 
means that the leather becomes structured as a result of that process. So that is why that is the uh, number one type of leather that they use on a Kelly Cellier. You would find Epsom in anything from a mini Kelly all the way up into like a Kelly uh, 35. Now I'm not going to be talking about Kelly 40s because I don't see a lot of them to really be able to sort of, you know, uh, get a gauge for them. And the next one, that's the number two leather for the Kelly Cellier is Tadalact. Uh, Tadalact isn't exactly an easy to come by leather. It is considered to be like a more rarer leather. It's not as common as Epsom, but nonetheless, that is the second leather that they are uh, more oftenly are found in for the Kelly Cellier. Uh, Tadalac has a beautiful shine, has a sheen to it. It has like a transparent finish, which gives it a beautiful glossy shine. Uh, it is a very structured leather. So that is exactly why that they use it for the Kelly Cellier. For Tadalac, you will find it in a Kelly 25, a Kelly 28, possibly Kelly 32, not sure about Kelly 35, but I haven't seen Tadalact in a mini Kelly. It might exist, but I definitely, if it does, it is definitely very, very super rare. The next one that is the third most frequently used leather is Chev. So that would be Chev Mysore. Uh, Chev is a very desirable, popular leather, and it is actually, again, like Tadalact, it is rare. It like, And I'm using the word rare lightly, because obviously it's not literally rare if you can actually get it, but it's just that it's not as common as Epsom, okay? Uh, so Chev is available mostly only, well, predominantly in a Mini Kelly or a Kelly 25. You would find Chev more oftenly in a Mini Kelly than what you would find in a Kelly 25 as a standard bag. Even then, in a Kelly 25, Chev is actually very hard to come by. The Mini Kelly is only available in the Cellia style. The Cellia means that it's our outside stitch. So with the Retorn, it gives a more relaxed look. Um, the return is done by, uh, they make the bag inside out and then they flip it, like reverse it. Uh, and then the cellier is done with the stitches on the outside. So the bag is made, uh, on the outside. It's made yeah, not inside out, but you know what I mean? You get what I'm saying. So yeah, that is the Kelly Cellier for the top three leathers. The other leathers that are available in a Kelly Cellier are definitely more scarce and harder to come by, but nonetheless, they do exist. So the fourth leather is Sombrero. Sombrero I have only seen in a Kelly 25 and a Kelly 28. It may exist in a Kelly 32. I'm not sure about, I don't think that they would do Sombrero in a Kelly 35. Uh, the reason being is that Sombrero um, is a very, it's again a very structured leather. All of these leathers will be structured and that's why they've been chosen for the Kelly Cellia. Um, but it's got a very velvety sort of feel to it. It's got like a velvet feel like what Swift has, but it is very, very firm um, and it does scratch easily. And it's very matte and that would be why that combination of that velvety buttery feel with the matte means that it does scratch easily and scratches do show and it doesn't develop any kind of patina because it hasn't got like that glossy sort of shine surface to it. Uh, so Sombrero isn't exactly a very popular leather because of that reasoning. Uh, the fifth one is Box Calf. So Box Calf is considered to be a push leather offer. You can't just, um, you pretty much can't request with your sales associate for a box calf bag. You can ask for it, but the chances are you're probably not gonna get it. They usually reserve box calf for very long-term clients, VVIPs, that kind of thing, because the store can't order the box calf leather. It just gets given to them by friends. It comes from France, they can't podium order it. It's not a leather that can just be ordered as a standard sort of ordering process by the store manager. Um, so I have seen box calf being made. Now I just wanna make this very clear. All the leathers that I'm actually talking about are leathers that are currently in production now. I'm not gonna be talking about like leathers that would have been for a Kelly Cellier back 10 years ago. We're just gonna be talking leathers that are still being made now and within the past sort of two years. So box calf is a, a leather that has been around for a very long time. It's a heritage leather for Hermes. So it has existed in the Kelly Cellier for a very long time. Um, it was more common before than what it is now. It is more scarce, but I do see box calf still being made in Kelly 25, Kelly 28, probably in a Kelly 32 as well, because it is a heritage leather and they shouldn't discriminate on people that like uh, different sized bags. Kelly 35, not sure. It is not really a bag that's kind of that sought after at the moment. So I feel like they probably aren't really wanting to use that leather for a Kelly 35, considering that the leather is more scarce and harder to sort of, you know, to produce. Uh, the sixth one is Berenia and I'm talking about the traditional smooth Berenia. 
All Berenia currently is in the color Fauve because I've had this said to me before. It's like, oh, I've got, yeah, I've got Fauve Berenia. Well, Fauve is actually the color. Um, there is traditional smooth Berenia and then there's Berenia Fauberg. So I'm only seeing the traditional smooth Berenia being still used currently to make a Kelly Cellier bag. Again, it's a push leather offer. You, the store cannot podium order it. The store manager can't order it for you. you pretty much, um, if you're requesting it with your sales associate, it may very well be doing it on deaf ears unless you have been shopping at the store for a very, very, very long time and you're a VIP, VVIP that kind of thing. Um, but you can express that you've always wanted one and just, you never know, but it is a push leather offer to the store. They can't order it, so it does mean that it is very hard to get. The store might only get two, one Berenia bag uh, in a Kelly in a year. They might get two. They might get one, you know, in a Cellia. They might get one in a Retorn. Who knows? It's just very, very hard to come by. And then the very final leather that I see being made in the Kelly Cellia is Vaux Butler. Um, Vaux Butler is typically available in a Kelly 25 and a Kelly 28. Same as the Brenia. I'm mostly only seeing in the 25 and in a 28. Vaux Butler... Um, Looks like it's a heritage leather because it looks like it's like Vache Natural, but it's not. It's a smooth leather, very hard wearing. Uh, it is a finished leather. Kind of, I would say, it's like the natural take on box calf. Uh, similar to Shimonix, however you say it, but that's a discontinued leather. Though Butler, I do not see very often. It is, a, I would say it's actually rarer than Berenia for sure. I have only ever seen it like a couple times in a Kelly 25. Probably exists in a Kelly 28. But yeah, Vaux Butler is probably, I'd say maybe Berenia and Vaux Butler are about hand in hand when it comes to like rarity, but they are still making it for a Kelly Cellier. Okay, so moving on to the Kelly Return. Uh, the first leather that's most common in the Kelly Return is in fact Togo leather. So I have Togo leather in my Birkin. Again, if you want to find out further details on the leather, just go ahead and watch the leather guide. Uh, Togo, in a nutshell, is a very durable, scratch-resistant leather with a noticeably visible grain. The second most used leather for Kelly Retorns uh, or Retourne. I have been told that it's Retourne, but from what I knew from like four years ago, I was also told that it was Retourne, but I have been corrected. Like, so I don't know if it's Retourne or Retourne, but whatever, you know what I'm saying. Um, so Clemence is the second most used leather for the Kelly Retourne. And this is somewhat similar, I'd say very similar actually to Togo. It is scratch resistant. It is more matte than Togo. It's got a noticeably larger visible grain to it. And um, the thing that you'll notice about both of these leathers is that they are quite soft. They're very soft. They are relaxed. So that is why they are the preference when it comes to the Kelly Return. That's why these are the top two ones because they are relaxed and the Kelly Return is a very relaxed silhouette style of bag. Uh, the third most used leather is in fact Swift. So my Kelly Return uh, in the 25 size is in Swift leather. Swift is a very buttery, smooth, velvety. It really feels luxurious. To me, in my opinion, Swift feels like the most expensive, luxurious leather that you would ever feel. Um, you know, there are mixed opinions on Swift. I personally find it very durable. I don't have any scratches on my Kelly, but I think it has a lot to do with color. Again, watch the leather guide if you want more details on Swift leather. Now, the fourth leather that is used on uh, Kelly Returns is Evercolor. So I have an Evercolor uh, Constance here. I also have an Evercolor Kelly Dance. Evercolor is similar to Swift, but it actually has a visible grain to it, but it is very buttery soft. Um, Swift does feel more luxurious than Evercolor in my opinion, but it is still somewhat comparable. Uh, the fifth most common leather used for um, Kelly Returns is actually Epsom, but it isn't actually all that common. You will not find Kelly Returns very oftenly in Epsom. It's just that compared to the other leathers, this is just a little bit more common. Uh, but Epsom Returns were, were more common back like 10 years ago, sort of thing, maybe even like six years ago, but nowadays they are very scarce, they're hardly made, but they still do make the Returns in the, in the Epsom leather. It's just that Epsom is more firm, so it's not exactly the ideal kind of leather for the Return, because the Return Kelly is supposed to be, you know, relaxed, casual, you know, that sort of thing, whereas Celia is supposed to be more structured, more like, uh, 
I would say it looks a little bit more dressed up than the Retorn and that's why they opt for a more firm leather with a cellier and a more softer leather for the Retorn. But nonetheless, they still do, do they still do Epsom for the Retorn Kellys. Now the rest of the leathers are definitely more harder to come by. You won't really see them, but they are still being made, but they're just much more scarce. Uh, the next one would be Evergreen. And Evergreen, I used to see a lot more in, in the Retorn Kellys, but nowadays I'm not. So it is definitely a more scarce leather that you would find in the Retorn. Kelly's pretty much from Epsom onwards unless you're wanting to really wait and wait indefinitely I probably wouldn't go about requesting these kind of leathers with your sales associate I would just stick to the very top ones the Togo Clement Swift and Ever color when it comes to like a Kelly Retorn because these other leathers just you just don't know if they're gonna come out if they're gonna be made and you could just be waiting a very long time but yeah you can still get Evergreen Kelly Retorns Evergreen uh, is more firm it's kind of like similar to Ever color how it has a grain to it but it like it and it's got like a buttery sort of feel but it's just a bit more firm than ever color uh the next one is novillo novillo is a very new leather so I have seen it pop up in a Kelly Retorn. It's just not um, uh, extremely common, but as time goes on, it could become more common. Novillo is quite similar, again, to like Swift. Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's in my leather guide. I think it might it might be a bit more firm than Swift and hold its structure better. But again, watch the leather guide because I have more detail on that and I don't have additional notes on the actual leather characteristics here, especially on the new ones, because I've been studying and um, been very passionate about Hermes for over four years, but Novillo is a new leather so a lot of the stuff that I know it's instilled in my head but the newer stuff it's still like I'm trying to still make sure that I retain the knowledge in my head for the newer the newer leathers like Novillo and Vaux Jonathan, Vaux Monsieur and that sort of thing. I know a lot of their characteristics I just don't know the full detail considering that they are new. Um, okay back on track the next one I would say is um, Berenia Fulberg. So I have a Berenia bag here this is Berenia Fulberg so it does have a visible grain to it it's an unfinished leather um, and you can see the Kelly Return in the Berenia Fulberg. It is very rare. I've only seen it a, a couple times, but Berenia Fulberg and Berenia Traditional is rare regardlessly. The next one would probably be Berenia Traditional, smooth, like traditional. So it's just called Berenia. You have Berenia and then you have Berenia Fulberg. So when I say Berenia, that actually means the smooth Berenia. And that is still done for the Kelly Return. Again, very rare, very hard to come by. It's a push leather, as I mentioned with the Kelly Cellia. Uh, now, the next one I have here is box calf. I'm not sure if they're still doing box calf in the Kelly Return. I'm not sure. I know that they did back in the day, but I'm just not sure if they're doing it anymore because box calf is obviously a uh, rare leather. It's a heritage leather, but it's very firm. So it's not exactly the most ideal candidate for Return. And because it's not the most ideal candidate to make a Return bag, um, they probably wouldn't opt for it since it's a very fur. Uh, sorry, since it's a very rare, to, like rarer leather, harder leather for Hermes to produce. Pretty much all the leathers that I mentioned would be available in any size Kelly, from like I would say from your Kelly 25 all the way through to your Kelly 35, perhaps. Obviously, like I said, the Mini Kelly doesn't come in the Return. It's only in the Cellier. So I haven't gone and specified specific sizes like I did with the Cellier for the Return, just because it's actually available in all in. It could be available in all the sizes, but just those top four leathers, Togo, Clement, Swift, and Evercolor are the ones that you would predominantly mainly see for Kelly Returns these days. Now, moving on to the Birkin. So this is the traditional Birkin silhouette. This is uh, what you would call Return, but we just don't call it Birkin Return because this has always been the traditional Birkin silhouette. And they've only, re they've only now just introduced a new silhouette for the Birkin. So the traditional Birkin, the Birkin. Um, the most common leather is definitely Togo. So this is, like I said, is in Togo leather and you will find it in Birkin 25 all the way up through to however big a Birkin pretty much is. Uh, the next one in Birkins is Swift. So you would typically find um, Birkins in Swift in the Birkin 25 nowadays. I'm not really seeing Birkin 30s in Swift because they've just introduced new leathers that are similar to Swift but just have uh, a, a better characteristic when it comes to holding shape in the bigger bags. So they're sticking only mainly to doing Swift in the Birkin 25 because obviously it's a smaller size rather than doing it in the Birkin 30 and up because if you do it in this size bag it does um, tend to flop and slouch over time over a long period of time with Swift but they've now like I said introduced some new leather 
colors that would rectify that kind of uh, problem that people might feel as a problem I personally don't mind I wouldn't mind a floppy a floppy Swift Birkin especially because Swift is so lightweight that Swift is a great leather if you want like a Birkin 35 get Swift or get Gulliver which is a um, discontinued leather which is the predecessor for Swift if you want a Birkin 35 just stick to those two and you will not feel the weight whatsoever that's just a little um, trick there uh, the next one would be uh, for Birkins is Clemence now Clemence leather uh, is only typically available in Birkin 30 and up. You will not see Clemence in Birkin 25s these days. They're not really making it in Birkin 25s because Clemence does slouch. Uh, it doesn't hold its shape. I feel that they are kind of catering the Birkin 25s to be bags that will hold their shape because they're a bit of like more of a cute kind of uh, cute mini bag that's more dressy, more for going out. So I feel like they're just kind of trying to retain that sort of uh, silhouette so it looks more elegant and dressy. That's just what I feel is kind of happening now and why they're not making Clemence anymore for Birkin 25 and why they're not doing Birkin 30 for Swift anymore either. Uh, the next one would be Epsom and you mostly would see Epsom on the Birkin 30 and up. You won't really see it on Birkin 25s anymore. They did do it like a long time ago but I'm just not seeing it anymore in Epsom leather. This one is Novillo. So Novillo is a new leather and I'm seeing it in Birkin 25 and up. Like I was saying, is that I believe that this uh, that Novillo um, holds its shape better than what Swift does in bigger bags. So that's why Novillo is all the way up, you know, to Birkin 30, Birkin 35s as well. I know that a lovely lady actually got a Novillo Birkin 35 quite recently, and it looks so beautiful. Uh, the next one is Vaux Jonathan. Vaux Jonathan is a very new leather. It is uh, also kind of similar to Swift as well. I'm not going to go into full detail here. Watch the leather guide. But uh, again, this is available in Birkin 25 and up. But it is harder to come by. Uh, Vaux Jonathan is actually harder to come by than Novillo, I'm noticing. Uh, so I would say out of those... Out of those uh, leathers for Birkins. Togo, Swift, Clemence, Epsom and Novillo is pretty much where, where you want to stick to um, when it comes to requesting a Birkin from your store and specifically in those sizes that I mentioned because not all of them are in all sizes. Uh, so Vaux Jonathan is in Birkin 25 and up but it is much harder to come by. The next one is Tadillac. Tadillac is in Birkin 25 to Birkin 30, not so much 35 and up, um, maybe not anymore I think, I know it probably was before because Tadillac has actually been around for a while, uh, but again it is very hard to come by, Tadillac in general is a harder leather but it's even harder to come by in a Birkin than what it is in a Kelly Cellier. Uh, the next one is uh, Berenia, so the Smooth Berenia is available in a Birkin 25, Birkin 30, Birkin 35, but very rare, very hard to come by, push leather offer as I was saying. Next one would be the Berenia for Berg, available in Birkin 25 and Birkin 30, rare yet again. Box calf. Uh, I'm not sure if they are doing this in Birkin 25, but I have seen box calf in Birkin 30 more recently. Like I said, we're not talking about like back five over five plus years ago. We're just talking more recent years. Uh, so I know it's in a Birkin 30, maybe a Birkin 35, but I think it's actually only I've seen box calf in a Birkin 30. If it exists in a Birkin 25, that would be absolutely amazing, but I don't think that they do it in a Birkin 25 just because of the way that the bag is made. It's essentially made inside out and then flipped reverse. I think that box calf is just a harder lever to kind of work with for that. Uh, and then the final one is Chev Mysore. I don't know for sure if I, if, Chev, I feel like Chev Mysore has, is no longer in production for Birkins anymore. Um, but I'm just saying it just in case it still is, but I, cause I know it was before, but I feel like it is no longer in production anymore for Birkins, unless you get a special order. So we're not talking about special orders. Okay. We're just talking about bags that you can request with your sales associate to potentially order at podium with your store, like with the store manager. Now, the next one is actually Birkin Cellier, and that's why I was kind of saying that this is actually the Birkin Return. There does now exist a Birkin Cellier. It is new. They've only just brought this out. The Birkin Cellier is essentially like the Kelly Cellier, but it's obviously in the Birkin instead, so it is outside stitched. Um, it is only available in a few leathers because it's only just been like introduced. It's not been around for a long time, and the very main leather is in Epsom, and it's available in the Birkin 25 Cellier and up. I think Birkin 25, uh, sorry, I think the Birkin Cellier is only in Birkin 25, 30 and 35 if I'm not mistaken so far. They might expand it to like um, 40, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure they're only stick with the 25, 30 and the 35. 
The next one is Vaugrain Monsieur. Now, this is a very limited leather and it is very, very hard to come by. There is another version of this leather which is more smooth, but I'm referring to the grained version. So that's why it's called Vaugrain Monsieur leather because it's kind of got a grain somewhat similar to what Epsom has, but it doesn't feel like Epsom. It's much more luxurious, probably has a much higher price point as well when it comes to leathers. Uh, and I've only seen that in the Birkin 30. I haven't seen it in a Birkin 25. And then the final one, and this is very super duper rare for a Birkinsellia. I think there's only one person that even has this. Um, and it's called a Vache Natural Grain. Because Vache Natural typically is not grained. It's actually a smooth leather, but it's a, it was a discontinued leather. But now they've brought it, like they've produced it again in a grained version uh, for the Birkinsellia. And I have seen this in the Birkin 30, but very super duper duper rare. Now the final bag is the Constance. So I'm just going to be referring to like both sizes of the Constance, the Constance 18, the Constance 24. This is the final bag that we have to talk about because we were only talking about the three elusive bags. Uh, now the Constance, the very number one leather that is made for the Constance is Epsom leather. Very common in Epsom in both sizes, extremely common. Uh, the next one, second most used leather for the Constance bag is in fact Swift leather, again for both sizes. And I think Swift is the most, per pretty much Swift uh, and the next leather I'm about to mention are the best leathers when it comes to the Constance in my opinion. The Constance is otherwise a heavy bag and, uh, and Swift is a very, very lightweight leather. The buckle makes the Constance a heavier bag and that's why I feel like Swift is pretty much the best leather you should be getting for the Constance. Uh, maybe not the Constance 8, like maybe the Constance 18 is okay. Like I have owned a Constance 18. I don't feel like it's very weighty, but the 24, you can definitely feel the weight in it. So I would stick to Swift. And then the next one is Evercolor. That's the second the other leather that I would say you should stick to when it comes to a Constance because Evercolor, which is this one here, is a very lightweight leather, very similar to Swift. It's just a bit more scratch resistant because it's got a grain to it. Uh, the fourth one is Tadillac. I did have a Tadillac Constance 18. Beautiful sheen to it. Um, I think that it's best in the Constance 18 than versus the 24 size just because it is an easier to scratch leather. Um, the fifth one is Evercalf. Now, we are getting into the leathers and are much more harder to come by. So for the Constance, the top four that you could pretty much request from your store that are more easily, readily available, that kind of thing, is Epsom, Swift, Evercolor, and Tadillac. Okay, so the fifth one, like I was saying, is harder to come by, and that's Evercalf. Uh, now, I'm not 100% sure if they're still making Evercalf, but I know that like a few years ago, you could still get Evercalf Constance. Uh, the next one is Vaux Butler. Vaux Butler is much harder to come by. It is a rarer leather. In general, it is a rarer leather. Uh, the seventh one is uh, traditional Brenia, the smooth Brenia. If anything, Vaux Butler and Brenia are probably neck and neck when it comes to like um, availability and rarity. Hard to come by, but it does definitely exist in the market. It's not so ridiculously, ridiculously rare, but it's just harder to come by. It's not as common as seeing the Epsom and the Swift and the Evercolor and the Tadillac. Um, Tadillac is, out of those four, it is the least common, but like compared to everything else, it is more common, okay? Just to put that in perspective. Number eight would be Boxcar. So they do still make Boxcar constants. If anything, you'll see probably more Boxcar constances than what we see maybe Kelly's these days, or maybe they're kind of neck and neck. Definitely much harder to see Boxcar Birkins, that's for sure. Um, then the ninth one is Vaux Monsieur. So Vaux Monsieur, this version is actually the smooth version. It's got a beautiful, actually, it's actually, do you know what? I actually forgot to mention Vaux Monsieur in my leather guide, so I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, Vaux Monsieur is like a hybrid between sombrero leather, Tadillac leather, and Swift leather. So putting that in a nutshell, um, it's got the velvety kind of feel that Sombrero has, but it's got more of a sheen to it. So it's kind of got a somewhat 
bit of a sheen like Tadillac has, but not as shiny, not as shiny. Um, but it's also got a kind of a bit more of a softer feeling that like Swift sort of has, that buttery sort of feel. So it's not like really firm like box calf is. It is not as shiny as like Tadillac. It is a fantastic leather. Vaux Monsieur feels really ridiculously luxurious. It is. It looks luxurious. It is just luxury written all over it. I would say if you could get a Vaux Monsieur bag, just get it because it is the epitome of luxe when it comes to Hermes. And it might not be like the most carefree leather that's for sure but I feel like when you are spending so much on these bags um, it's not just about being ridiculously carefree with the leather it's also getting leathers that feel like they are the 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 very top the top of the tr when it comes to leathers and it really feels like the price that you spent on the bag uh it translates with the leather as well like it just goes hand in hand the craftsmanship the feel of the leather the look of the leather the characteristic how how beautiful it shines and there's all these things about it that you can kind of say that are beautiful and they will develop characteristic over time as well it's not just like say like to compare like with something like Epsom all it is is just a leather that is a heat pressed grain like there is nothing really all that special to it um you know I that's just truth be told and I do like I'm not the biggest fan of Epsom but I love Epsom in the bleed and especially in Cray I love Epsom for light colors so there are a lot of things I like about Epsom as well but to be completely and totally honest I feel like going with those really ridiculously luxurious feeling leathers that might be harder to, harder to kind of use like in a carefree way. To me, I personally feels like I'm that's where I'm getting my value for money and that's where I'm really feeling that heritage and that richness and that luxe with Hermes, like being such an expensive brand and being a very top tier. So yeah, that's pretty much Vaux Monsieur sort of in a nutshell, very luxurious leather. Hybrid between Sombrero, Tadillac, and Swift. It is a very hard to come by leather. So unfortunately, even though I'm saying if you can get a Vaux Monsieur bag, you should definitely take it. Um, the chances are you can't request one. If it gets offered to you, definitely take it. Uh, yeah, it, it is very hard to get, unfortunately. Um, I probably butchered some of these leather, these leather names. So obviously they're going to be on the screen. Um, yeah, that is it. That is it in a nutshell. Watch the leather guides. I will put them in the description down below. But yeah, that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Um, hopefully you found this very useful. Um, yeah, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.